Welcome to this quick start tutorial for Phoenix FD4 3DS Max. In this video, we look at creating a gasoline explosion simulation using a fast preset and then rebuild it manually to understand it more fully. Take a look at the tap water simulation in our previous quick start video for a little background on the concepts that we continue here. Now, we'll start in a blank scene and I'll create a sphere that will be the emitter for my simulation and I'll set its radius to 24 meters. In the Customize menu, choose Units Setup. You should be in metric units using meters and confirm that the system unit setup is set to one unit equals 100 centimeters or one meter. This is to ensure that the simulation will be quite large for a massive explosion and as we saw with the tap water sim in our previous quick start video, scale is important to an accurate sim. With the sphere selected, click and hold on the explosion preset icon in the Phoenix FD toolbar and choose this second icon for the gasoline explosion preset. This creates the simulation container with the sphere as the source. Now select the start simulation icon. I'll elapse several minutes here to see the sim progress into this fiery explosion, and I'll stop the simulation with the toolbar icon. As I move around the scene, we have a nicely detailed explosion which should hopefully warn you against playing with matches and gasoline. So we did this pretty easy using a preset, but now let's take a look at setting this up manually to get a deeper look at the workflow. Click the trash icon in the toolbar to delete the cache from the scene. Select the simulator and delete it. Also, select the source node and delete that, leaving just the sphere. In the Phoenix toolbar, click on the Create a Fire Smoke Simulator icon and click and drag to create a volume shown here in the pink colored lines. I'll place the sphere a little more centered at the bottom of the container. Select the simulator and in the modify panel, open the grid rollout and notice that our sim is at about 230 by 220 by 123 meters, which is good for what we're looking to do. Its resolution, the total cells value, is at about 6.1 million. I'll decrease that to speed up the simulation by clicking the decrease resolution button here three times to get it down to about 825,000 for total cells. For more information on this, please see our previous tap water quick start video. And now we just need a source. Click the create fire smoke source icon in the toolbar and place it in the scene like so. In the modify panel, click the add button and then select the sphere to add it as an emitter for the explosion. The source node is where we control a lot of the simulation settings. So in its modify panel, turn off the temperature and smoke options and turn on fuel. The outgoing velocity parameter controls the speed of the discharged fluid, so increasing this value will discharge more fluid into the sim per second. Since we're creating an explosion, we'll need to discharge a large amount of fluid over a short amount of time. Make sure you're at frame zero and turn on auto key, and set outgoing velocity to 2000. Go to the next frame and set outgoing velocity to zero and 3ds max sets a key turn off auto key select the simulator and start the simulation but nothing really happens in the modify panel go to the fuel rollout and turn on enable burning which is generally what happens when i eat spicy tacos click the start simulation icon and you'll notice that still nothing is happening stop the sim again and expand the fuel settings the ignition temperature is the temperature at which our fuel ignites and burns. Phoenix FD uses 300 Kelvin as the default ambient temperature in a sim, so if you set a value slightly below 300, such as 290, and then start the sim, you get ignition inside the container. Now the explosion is looking a little bit like a cream puff right now. The preview quality is a bit ratty. Expand the preview rollout and scroll down to the bottom and turn on the Enable in Viewport option in the GPU preview section. Now, the blast is clipping the edges of the simulator. Go back up to the grid rollout and change Adaptive Grid to Temperature. Now, this will expand the grid depending on the temperature of the fluid inside when it meets the specified threshold. Set this threshold to 600. 
Let's get the explosion not to clip at the bottom where the ground is. Set your boundary conditions to a z-axis of jammed negative. This allows the explosion to react to the bottom of the sim, in other words, the ground. Start the sim again, and I'll elapse about 20 seconds here to see the sim reacting nicely to the ground. Stop the sim and take a look. The explosion looks way too uniform right now. Select the fire source object, and in the modify panel, introduce noise to the sim's discharging fluid by setting the noise parameter to 10. Play the sim, and the explosion's shape is looking more broken up. As this continues to sim, let's focus on the render settings. Select the simulator, expand the rendering rollout, and select the volumetric options button. Expand the fire rollout. Notice there are three options for the fire opacity mode that will control part of the look. Choose use own opacity and the viewport updates. Stop the simulation. The graph here controls just the opacity of the fire. Click to add a new point to the curve and drag it up and down to affect the opacity of the fire. Lower opacity reveals more of the internal fire content making it look brighter, and increasing the opacity hides more of that internal structure. Click the expand button for a larger view of the graph. Now set a few new points and create a look like this wave I'm making to create more visual interest to the explosion. We can tweak the opacity with the opacity multiplier value. I'll set that to 0.5 and the fire gets brighter. But if you back down on the physically based value, like to 0.75, the fire gets a good deal more red and orange added to it. This parameter balances between how much of the fire intensity comes from the color gradient plus the fire multiplier versus how much is calculated using the physically based black body shader. You can change the color of that fire by sliding this arrow, and when you double click it, you can select a color like this green and blue that I'll pick to make a point. I'll cancel that action, and we're back to the red from before. I'll scrap the timeline to see how the simulation is doing. It looks a bit too contained still, so expand the dynamics rollout. Under conservation, increasing the quality parameter allows the sim to spread out a bit more and swirl better. Set the value to 80 and restart the simulation. The higher the quality value, the more simulation time is needed, so be careful when going too high. As I elapse about 40 seconds of time here, you can see that the sim is breaking up a bit more, but it's just not quite there yet. Click open the volumetric options in the rendering rollout again. Disable the fire for now. There's a lot of smoke in the result as the fuel is burning up. Stop the sim to address this easier. In the fuel settings, reduce the smoke amount to 0.4 to allow for more burning for a brighter fire and increase the smoke threshold to 1, which will lessen how much of the fuel is created as smoke. Lastly, lower the propagation value to 2 to reduce how fast it propagates throughout the sim. Set the fire's based on parameter back to temperature and play the sim, and we're getting better results. But it's just looking too hot right now, so I'll stop the sim and reduce the energy to five and then play the sim again. I'll elapse about 30 seconds here and our sim looks pretty neat, but the blast stays too hot for too long. What I wanna do is cool off the explosion faster. Go ahead and stop the sim. Expand the dynamics rollout and increase the cooling value to 0.3 and we'll get the fire to cool faster inside the simulation. Play the sim and over about 30 seconds of elapsed time, you can see a much more interesting result. But our smoke looks too thin right now. Expand the smoke opacity rollout and set the simple smoke opacity value to 0.9 to give us thicker smoke as the sim continues. Expand the smoke color rollout and set a darker gray to get deeper darker smoke. Reduce the external scatter multiplier to 0.8 so that the light inside the smoke scatters less and you should notice a slight darkening of the smoke. Stop the simulation and scrub the timeline to evaluate how it looks. 
The fire looks weaker now, so expand the fire rollout in the volumetric render settings and increase the fire multiplier to 5 to get you hotter fire inside the explosion. Now make sure V-Ray is set to be your renderer in render setup and let's go ahead and render the result. Now we need a ground plane, so in the create menu, select V-Ray, V-Ray plane and click to create one in the scene. Set it just a little bit lower and give it a gray color. Click render again and we have a ground that is actually lit by the explosion. But it's a little bit too bright. In the volumetric render settings, under the fire rollout, set the light power on scene value to 0.5 and re-render the frame and you've reduced the lighting cast into the scene. We need a higher resolution for a better result. So in the modify panel, go to the grid rollout and click increase resolution three times to have about 6.1 million total cells again and rerun the sim. Now, I'll elapse about 6 minutes of sim time as we watch this explosion resolve with a higher quality. And there we have it. Now, let's take a look at using this in a practical scenario. Open the file barrels max start dot max and you'll see three metal barrels in the scene and a camera called camera 1. Select the first barrel and select the gasoline explosion preset in the toolbar. Change your cell size to 0.03 meters for a faster simulation speed. Start the sim and our barrel explodes. So let's get the other barrels to explode as well. Stop the sim and take a look in the perspective camera. Select the source and shift drag to copy the source and move it over like this. In the modify panel, click add and select the second barrel to attach it to the second source. Make sure that the barrels are inside the simulation container, so I'll move mine over a little bit like that. Now if I start the sim, both the barrels start their explosions at exactly the same time. I want to offset the barrel to make it look as if the first explosion sets off the second barrel, so go ahead and stop the sim. Select the second source, and you can see it already has keys on the outgoing velocity parameter. Select those keys and move them to begin at frame 5. The first key has the outgoing velocity set at a value of about 3000. Go to frame 4 and turn on auto key. Set the outgoing velocity to 0 so that the barrel doesn't start exploding until frame 5 and go ahead and turn off auto key. Play the sim and you can see that the first explosion looks like it's setting off the second one. Now, like any good pyromaniac, let's add more to this fireball by blowing up the third barrel. Stop the sim. Copy the second source by shift dragging it like so. Add the third barrel to that new source. Drag your timeline to see the sim. Now, go ahead and turn off adaptive degradation so you can scrub the timeline a little bit faster. Go to frame 40 and offset the existing outgoing velocity keyframes to start at frame 40. Select the simulator and then start the sim. Now I'll elapse just over two and a half minutes and you can see as the first two explosions begin to cool off there is a third explosion that heats things up again. I'll elapse just over three more minutes to get to this result and I'll stop the sim and now render a frame let's say frame 70 and it looks pretty cool. Select the simulator and set the cell size to 0.015 meters, which increases our total cells to about 4.6 million, and go ahead and restart the simulation for a more detailed sim. I'll elapse about 6 minutes of simulation time to see this final result in my sim here. I get a lovely simulation and a safe way to blow up 3 barrels full of gasoline and not burn my...